Welcome to Indie Labs, where we're putting the science in your hands. Last night, my house was struck by a meteorite, and I survived to tell the tale. Actually, your house was probably struck by a meteorite too, and you survived, I assume. You're watching this video. Every day, our Earth is pelted with tons of small little meteorites, space dust. Some estimates say that for every square meter that exists, a micrometeorite's gonna land there sometime during the year. A great place where they're sitting and waiting for you to find them is on your rooftop. In today's lab, we're gonna show you a quick, simple, easy way of how you can collect and find micrometeorites. You're gonna need some sort of plastic sealable bag. You're definitely gonna need some magnets. I recommend some neodymium magnets. You don't need neodymium, but the stronger the better. Grab some of these if you can, but if you can't, just grab the largest magnet that you can find. You're gonna need something to magnify with. These things are small. Again, this video is how to find it micro meteorites. One more thing you're going to need for this method is some rain gutters. So hopefully you do have a rain spout that funnels things off of your roof. So how do we presume that we're going to collect micro meteorites? Micro meteorites fall everywhere on earth. You can find micro meteorites just on the ground and in the dirt, but if we collect the material that's on your rooftop, there's going to be a greater chance that that stuff fell from space. So here's our hypothesis. There's currently on my roof plenty of micro meteorites. That's something that we're assuming. We're also going to assume that during the next rain, those micrometeorites are going to be flushed down with anything else that's sitting on the roof. As they go down through the spout, our magnet should be able to collect them. Meteorites fall into three major categories. There's stony meteorites, there's iron stony meteorites, and there's iron meteorites. Just like the name implies, these names are based upon what the content is, what the meteorite's mostly made out of. All three of these categories are comprised of iron and nickel content. In some cases, a meteorite might be just weakly attracted to a magnet. In other cases, like those of the iron meteorite classification, they are strongly attracted to a magnet. Here's the procedure. Take out your magnets. I've got six here. I'm going to remove one of them. If you have multiple magnets for this, set one aside. It'll help later on. Place your magnets inside of your bag and seal it up. Try to prevent any air from being in there. Now that you've got your magnets in the bag, let's go find a rain gutter. Alright, so here's our rain gutter. I'm going to take the bag and I'm just going to roll it a little bit so we can fit it in there. This is also why we kept that extra magnet. I'm going to place it up inside the gutter. And it's okay if some of the bag hangs out. I'm going to take the other magnet and just put it on the underneath so that way it holds those magnets in place. And we're all set. This, by the way, is what happens when you have bird feeders with sunflower seeds in them right by your rain gutter. Now, after the next rain, when we check the magnet to see what's on there, we can't guarantee that everything is going to be a micrometeorite. And some of those little pieces, they will be meteorites, but they might be the stony kind. Those are a little bit harder to identify. But one type, the iron nickel meteorites, are incredibly easy to identify. Let me show you why. Meteors will travel through space essentially unchanged for millions or even billions of years. When Earth's gravity pulls it close enough, it starts to fall through the atmosphere, which creates an intense amount of air friction and begins to heat up the meteor. Eventually, the outside is fully melted, and little pieces of the meteor start to break away. This is what gives shooting stars their glowing tails. As they leave, the rest of the meteor gets smaller and smaller. Now, sometimes they're still quite large when they impact the Earth, but in other cases, they might break apart into small little tiny pieces completely. This is what happens to the majority of meteors, and what we mean by when we say they burned up in the atmosphere. Once they're small enough, the air resistance is enough to slow them down to where there's not a lot of heat, and they end up cooling. And then they hit something. Maybe your rooftop, maybe your yard, maybe even you. Boink. So if attached to our magnet in that debris are little tiny metal spheres, we have very good confidence that it's a micrometeorite from space. Now we just got to be patient and wait for the next rain. Well, I have to be patient. You can just keep watching the video. We had to wait. One day. One day. Very convenient. So it rained last night and it had been four days since the last rain. So we should have four days worth of micrometeorites from a good portion of the roof. We're going to take it out and see what we got. Got lots of debris on there. Now here's why we put the magnet in the plastic bag. Reach in, pull the magnet off, and let the debris just fall onto a clean white piece of paper. Just because it was on your roof and it was magnetic does not mean it's a meteorite. Of this material, some of it might be the stony meteorite type, but we're not going to be able to easily identify it as such. 
Instead, what we're looking for are small little round iron meteorites. Keep on looking. Oh. Well, hello, little micro meteorite. How you living? Hunting, hunting. Ooh, did I see one? Whoa. That one is much larger. Oh, yeah. That is a keeper. Probe around a little bit more. See what else we can find. Got another one. Nice metallic sphere, definitely a micrometeorite. Good find. Something optional you can do is once you've got your micrometeorites, let them sit in lemon juice or vinegar for about two minutes. Make that space dust shine. Well, I hope you did this lab and I hope you got some good results. If you did, leave a comment below. Let me know how it went. Also, if you're looking forward to more indie labs, where we're going to show you fun, cool science stuff that you can do at home. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll also keep you updated on any upcoming hip hop from the Tungsten Clan. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. One started, Tungsten Clan's in the mix. Lace up, it's the shows are catching you on the switch. My teaching style's symbiotic, never parasitic. Hip hop's in my culture, like culture's in my petri dish.